Hi, I'm Tristy. In this video, I want to address a question that I got on YouTube about making some of these statistics in one of my demo apps actual real statistics. So this is the app. Uh, some of you may have gone through the 30 day challenge previously, so you may be familiar with it. Um, the statistics on this page are all static. So they're just, uh, just static data that have been uh, looped through using um, ng repeat to get this uh, get this page to display. So what I want to do is have a quick look at making this first stat, which is total customers, an actual live stat. So just going to jump over quickly, have a look at um, the customers that I have just to see how many I've currently got. Um, so I've got three, six, nine, twelve. So there's 14 customers sitting in the app at the moment. Um, so what I want to do is essentially be able to display that as a live stat up here um, on this page. So to jump in, what I'm going to do is show you how to add a custom action to an Angular resource. So if, you, um, if you're not familiar with Angular resources or if you don't uh, come along to the Angular docs often, one thing that I have found is that the docs sort of become more useful the more familiar you get. Just having a look through here, this may not mean too much to you, but essentially what you can do is create your own custom actions in uh, or using Angular resources. So what we're going to do is do something similar to this. So I'm going to do a count of the list of all the customers. So I'm going to do a get. You can actually create your own actions um, and there's some examples here on in terms of how you can go about doing that. So I do suggest you go and have a look through the docs, but I will take you through this process really quickly. So just opening up, I've got the um, the app open over here. I've got a modules folder. Um, I like to kind of, when I'm working across the client and the server, I like to rearrange my uh, documents so that I can actually uh, work my way either from the client up to the server or from the server back to the client. So I'm just going to open up everything that I need. Um, I'm going to start off with um, just everything I need on the client side. So I will um, put these changes in the home client view. Um, I will, and you can see there's sort of just an ng repeat at the moment. We're loop looping through alerts. Um, so let's have a look at that controller, which is this one here. So it's just really static data, just um, you know, a plain array that we're just looping through. Um, and then what I want is, so this, this gives me the view. Um, the view is associated to the home controller, which is this one here. Um, this home controller I want to then use um, to call a resource or to call a service, and the service will be for customers. So I'm just going to go across to customers and open up the customer service, which is this one here. I'm just going to rearrange that to that side. Um, now from this service, I then want to call the uh, express route. So I'll just go to server, um, go to routes and just open up the customer server routes. Um, and then from the routes, I will call the relevant customer controller. So that's kind of the order we've got. Um, sort of going from the client up into the server. So let's see if I can rearrange this quickly. Um, kind of over here on the page. So um, if I just take you through what I've got here again. Um, so I've got the view over here. Uh, under the view, I've got the client controller. Under the controller, I have the service. Uh, under the oh, uh, over and so that's all the client stuff on the left there and on the right I've got their server controller and I've got the server route so we sort of um, We could either start from here and sort of go sort of up like that anti-clockwise or we could start from this way and just go through it clockwise and that's um, That's what I'm going to do as we go through it. So Let's have a look at this. I'm just gonna make it bigger while I'm working on it um, so here is the customer server controller and to start off, I'm going to just grab one of the existing um, find controls that we've got. So all the find methods, I should say, and instead of a list of customers, I'm going to just change that to K. 
count of customers. Um, just rearrange this a little bit so we can see it neatly or just easily, I guess, not so much neatly. Um, and just see what's going on in this find at the moment. So, so at the moment we have this exports.list. We want to change that so you can give it a name. This is the name of the method. So it's a similar way to how you would name a function, for example. Um, so cust count is what I'm going to call it. Um, I don't want to do a find. I actually want to do a count. I don't need to do a sort or a populate. And I actually don't even need to do an execute in this particular case. So what I'm going to do is basically just get rid of those two. And if later on I want to put, um, for example, some parameters into the count, I can do that too. So um, essentially it will look something like this. Now instead of returning customers, I'm just going to say uh, we return customer count. Um, there, if there's an error, then we'll return an error message. Else, uh, what I want to do is just return. Um, what I'm going to do is because I want to return this as JSON, um, and I don't want it to kind of turn into an array on the way back. I'm going to just be very specific with the data. So I'm going to return it back as data, and I'm going to push that first into an object. So var data, um, and this is just really for my pedantic kind of consistency. You don't have to do it in this way, um, but this is just my preference. So I'm going to just grab that and throw that back into here. So there we go. So now um, we should be able to refer to the response using data dot count or whatever we choose to use on the client side. So cool. So that that's our controller. So that's that's it done for the express um, controller side. Now what I want to do is refer to this down here in the route. So I, I want to make sure that I've got a route, so like an API, right? Think of a route like an API. Okay, I want to make sure that I've got an API that when I call it, it goes and fetches this particular method and performs this particular function and either returns uh, the response I want or the, or the error. So um, when you're dealing with routes, one thing you have to keep in mind is that it's all, it, the routes always work from top down. So if, if you've got something that's um, that's got these um, colon uh, on the front of it, then that refers to, um, it, it, or that expects an ID to be sent through. And it can be a little bit tricky because it doesn't know the format of the ID specifically until it chooses to do something with it, with these param bits down here. So always make sure that your order of routes um, E, when you've got a static route comes prior to one of these more generic ones. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, so I'm going to just copy what's in this first bit here. And I'm going to throw that in here. And I'm, so I'm, I've actually put that in above this particular route. And the reason for that is because I'm going to make this a static route. So I'm just going to call this something like um, Cust count, you can call it whatever you like. It's just a reference to a route. And then this bit down here is where it becomes important. So at the moment, it refers to list because I've just copied it, but I want it to actually refer to the method that I want to use. So I'll change this here to that there, and I'll get rid of for, for, for just today, I'll get rid of the, um, the policy reference there. The policy references are just implementing ACL rules. Um, so that's like uh, when you want to use roles and um, to only allow certain people or certain roles to access certain types of data. So that's not necessary for this demo. Um, all right, so now when I call this route, the API customers cust count, I want to get um, from this particular method here. So customers, again, is just a reference here, which is just referring to the customer server controller, which is this particular file. Um, and the dot customers count just refers to this particular method. So that's our server done. Server side, all good. Okay, so now that the server side is good, let's have a look at the client side of things. So I'm going to this time, I'm going to start at the bottom. So working kind of clockwise through. Um, now what I want to do is actually 
call um, this particular route using the customer's client service. Okay, so at the moment we have an update action in here. So this is kind of similar to um, what we were looking at back here. So these were the different types of actions that we could use. You can actually create custom versions of these as long as you refer to the relevant methods that are available to you. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I can pretty much copy that like that and just throw in a little comma and paste it in and then just rename this to something else. So I'm going to rename it to just something that's um, kind of obvious. So just count customers. Um, I don't want it to be a put. I want it to be uh, for this purpose, just to get. Um, and I want it when I, when I refer to this particular method in the customer's service, I want to do a get, but I also want to call a particular URL. And that URL is this one right over here. So that's the cust count URL that we've just set up or the API that we've just set up. Um, and I also want to make sure that I only come back with one value. So what I'm going to do is change this to this array is false. So I don't want it to be um, returned as an array. I just want it to be returned as a particular value. So that's all good. Um, now, once that's done, now I can actually um, refer to this service and this particular action in the um, home uh, client controller. So the, or any controller that I want to refer to it from. So grab the service and throw that into this controller and that there, just like that, um, and just grab the name of that one there, and I can just make that a bit smaller too, so that can go out of the way. Just dismiss all of this stuff, so that moves, um, and just leave it there so you can see it. Okay, so now um, here's our home client controller, and in here is there is the name of the method that we want, which throw um, some uh, little open brackets on the end of that, and we just put prefix that with the service that it is from. So customers dot count customers now lets us refer to this, which call get does a get call to this particular API or this particular URL, um, which goes across to our route, uh, which calls this method, um, which finds the method here in this file and should return us account. Cool. So um, to kind of close this, this out, what I want to do is just, I'm going to just use a scope because um, that's what was used and set up in the rest of this app, but don't use scope normally. Um, you know, use this and use controller as, use all that good stuff. Um, but uh, it's okay for, for, for demo purposes. So let's say I'm doing um, number of customers, for example, right? So scope number of customers equals customers dot count customers. So customers dot count customers just refers to customers count customers down here. Um, okay, so that is pretty much it. So let's just refer to this and let's just see if that works for us. So I can then take a reference of number of customers and um, I'm just going to just put it into like a random place, the top here, and just go like H2 um, and just put it into curlies and just say number of customers. So I might just say the number of customers like that. So let me just make that smaller there. So this is just, um, there's not much HTML going on here, but that's the, um, the home page that we've got at the moment. So all right, so um, that is kind of it. That's all we need to do. Let's check it out. So I'll just save it and go across and have a quick look at that. All right, cool. So it does say at the moment count 14, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to just throw that on the end. So number of customers, I'm just going to change that to count. So obviously this is number of customers here is referring um, on our customer server controller to uh, to data, just the top level there. Um, and because uh, the value of customer count was actually put into count, um, we need to refer to um, dot count when we actually want that specific value. So um, that's just 
normal sort of um, Jet JavaScript. So nothing, nothing really clever or, or anything like that there. So it's just, just a reference. Um, there we go. So now we've got a number of customers, which is 14, but that isn't really where we want it, right? We want it, we want to be able to loop through um, and actually show the total customers here. So instead of the 20,000, it should actually stay 14. So um, here's a little kind of trick that you can use to do that. So I'm just going to go back and um, just this time I'm going to go back to the home client controller and within it, um, so this is the value, right? So it's 20,408. Add a new property of say, oops, um, just total num. And in that, I'm just going to refer to the scope of number of customers here. So now I can actually use this total num up here. Um, and actually put it into the, so what, what I want to do is say that if there is a total num, uh, let's see that so you can see it, um, if there is a total num, then uh, display that, um, but if there's no total num, then just display the total, which is what you're displaying at the moment. So, um, so we're just going to say alert and dot total num dot count, because that is the value that we're using, and then just double pipes as the or, um, and, and uh, just the 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 let just the the left the rest of the value there. So if there's an alert dot total num count, then display it. Um, otherwise, just display the alert total. Just let that refresh. There we go. So. If the value is available and we have a count, we can display it for total customers. The rest of the data stays exactly the same unless you go through and change them up too. Um, look, I hope that helped. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details. If you have questions, send them through. Um, I've been super busy lately, but I will try and get to them um, and, uh, and create some more videos uh, as we go. So um, I'll, uh, I'll see you again soon.